Hi guys, it is time for a new set of tutorials on Angui, and this time I am going to split them up into multiple videos rather than just doing everything in a single video. In this tutorial I am going to explain my environment, which includes what windows that I have open right now and what each of them actually does. And so let's get to it. I am going to intentionally revert my window settings back to default values. So this is what you would normally start with in Unity. And there are actually quite a few issues with this kind of a layout, not least of which is wasted space. The main problem is the scene view and game view are actually hidden. One of them is hidden behind the other. And that is not good for an GUI. You will want to have both of them visible at the same time for editing your user interface. Otherwise, it may not be possible to determine the size of the window correctly for the purpose of NGUI laying things out. And so this is how I fix it. I'm going to choose a single column layout, which is actually what uh, Unity used to use before version 3. Point something. What was it for? I forget. In any case, I am comfortable with this kind of a layout, but it's really up to you what you do. Next, I'm going to actually drag it from where it was down to up here so it is beside the hierarchy view. I'm also going to modify the console so it is underneath the project. I'm going to drop the hierarchy to be back here. So now I have two columns up here. The console is the bottom left corner. I still have inspector on the right and a big area in the center that I can work with. I'm going to further adjust it a little bit and lastly, I'm going to make sure that the game window is actually visible at the same time as the scene view. So there we go. Now there's a scene view, a game view, and a couple of uh, visible components. Well, windows, not components. Okay, so the next step is opening windows that belong to NGUI that will help you work with the UI system. In the NGUI menu, go to Open and add the Prefab toolbar, which was actually added in NGUI 360. And it is basically like a palette of different prefabs. You can uh, drag new prefabs onto here, drag prefabs off of here to work with. It's uh, fairly robust, and it's not limited to the UI, which makes it quite handy for more than just user interfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and dock it around here, and the game view will then go here. Now I'm going to shrink the toolbar so it is on the left. Now the actual uh, toolbar can be configured. I currently have it in compact mode, but you can actually set it to be in uh, icon mode, which is probably something that you're going to start with now that I think about it. And you can also choose it to be in detailed mode, which just basically prints the names of each prefab underneath the icon. Personally, I prefer the compact mode because I can fit more into a viewable area. But it's really up to you. The toolbar itself actually has several different tabs that you can work with. Each tab is a different collection of prefabs that you can uh, drag in and drag out. So if the first one was for your user interface elements, for example, which is what is going to be by default. Second, third, fourth, and fifth, it can actually be for your game objects, if you choose to use this feature. But more on that later. Let's continue with the setup. I'm also going to want to open up the Atlas Maker and the Font Maker, for sure. Atlas Maker it'll, is what's actually used to create atlases. And atlases is just basically a collection of different textures that are packed into a single larger texture that NGUI then uses to draw things. Now the advantage of that is actually quite obvious. If you open up the stats uh, tab you will notice that the number of draw calls here is only one even though there are several user interface elements present. This is made possible by the fact that NGUI actually batches everything that you see into as few draw calls as possible in order to draw it on the screen. So, although there are several elements here, they all happen to share the same exact texture, the same exact material, which means that they can all go into the same exact draw call. 
which is obviously very important for mobile devices. And speaking of draw calls, if at any point you want to see exactly what NGUI is doing, you can go to NGUI, open, and draw call tool. This will show you all the draw calls that are generated by your current layout and will let you debug it further. In my case, I tend to uh, place the draw call tool over here where it doesn't interfere with anything. But an example of usage uh, here would be to, uh, for example, I got a wooden atlas material here and I want to know exactly what shader it's using. Well, I can just double click on it and it will show me the hidden generated material and which atlas is being used, or which shader is being used rather. I can also debug things by making them hidden or selecting the panel that manages them. But more on this later as well. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the font maker. Font maker is what you actually will use to create bitmap fonts and place them inside an atlas. And this is just another way of saving draw calls. I'm going to cover it in a greater detail in the following tutorial. For the time being, your environment should be all set up and you should be good to go. In the next tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of NGUI and I will explain how to use it in order to create simple user interfaces. Thanks for watching.